So I'm saying that because the way that you were taught it last year might have been fine for you and it sat well with you and that's just the way you're always going to think of it. Usually if you are taught some way and it works for you, then it'll work for you and, and you're good. I might teach things slightly different, just a different way of thinking of it, which might you know, make you, a few light bulbs go on and make sense for you and then you can kind of think of it. But I'm almost going to teach it as if you've never seen it before. Okay? And then, again, I might it might sound like I'm teaching you something totally brand new in a certain section. And that just might be because you thought of it differently last year. But it's all the same thing. Um, so, before we get started, if you talk about graphing an angle, this is always your initial or starting ray. And then your angle opens counterclockwise from there. So anything between here and here is between zero, and we get up to 90 degrees. And then 90 degrees opens up larger and larger to 180, and then down to 270, and then 360. 360 lies on top of zero, right? The end ray is called your terminal ray. So this is your initial ray. And then you can have, you know, your terminal ray might land in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant, or your terminal ray might land on the X or Y axis. But let's just say, for instance, that your terminal ray lands there. So initial, terminal, not too big vocab words there. There's two very important things about your terminal ray. What quadrant it lands in, and do you remember all students take calculus, remember that little acronym? Okay, so we'll talk about that. That's why the quadrant is going to be so important. And then your reference angle. And the reference angle is always the angle, and I'm going to write this here, the angle made between the terminal ray and which axis? The x-axis. Always the x-axis. So, if, you, if this is your second quadrant terminal ray, that's your reference angle. If it was a first quadrant terminal ray, that would be a reference angle. If your terminal ray opened up and landed in the third quadrant, even if it's way down there, your reference angle is always the angle created with the x-axis. And let's do that. That right there would be the reference angle. Good. So these different things, I've actually never had kids memorize this at all. But if it's a first quadrant angle, the question is, how far away is your angle from zero degrees? So you would do your angle minus zero, essentially. It is what it is. So that's why for quadrant one, it just says reference angle. In the second quadrant, you're, you're pretty much trying to figure out how, how shy are you of 180. So if that's 180 and that's only 150, the question is how far shy are you? So 180 minus the 150. So that's why the reference angle in that one is given by 180 minus the angle. In the third quadrant, you really want to know how far past 180 did you go. So you would take your angle measure and you would subtract 180 to see how far you went. So that kind of flips it. And then in the last quadrant, you're trying to really figure out how shy of 360 are you. So if that's 360 and this is 280, you're going to do 360 minus 280 to see how many degrees there are between that. So if you want to memorize those, you can. I think you should conceptually be able to figure it out give you one less thing to memorize this chapter. 
um, but your reference angle is always the angle made with the x-axis. And it should always be between what two numbers? In degrees, let's say. Your reference angles, ever anyone remember? Zero and ninety. Okay. If you are, and I'm going to do a quick new unit circle for you. If you're going in degrees, I think we're much better at that. Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. In radians, this is zero radians. This is pi over two. This is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. So the whole circle is 2 pi, which means half of the circle is 1 pi. Does that make sense? And so we're really splitting up the full circle into fourths. There's a fourth of 2 pi, which reduces to pi over 2 a half of 2 pi, which is pi, one and a half of 2 pi, which is 3 pi over 2, and then the full 2 pi. So I, I mentioned that because when you are converting, some you multiply by pi over 180, some you multiply by 180 over pi. That's because pi radians over 180 degrees is like multiplying by 1. Remember doing dimensional analysis as freshmen? Like if you had to change feet, if you had to change like feet per minute to to inches per second or something. Okay, so in in a different look we don't really present it as that but this is dimensional analysis you're trying to change something out of degrees so you multiply it by one the multiplying by one maintains the value but you do it in a creative way so that your degrees cancel so we put 180 degrees on the denominator and it's equivalent pi radians on the top so like in dimensional analysis, you would have multiplied by 12 inches over one foot because they're equal lengths, but the 12 inches on the top would hold inches and then on the bottom over one foot would cancel out feet. And so you would change feet into inches by doing that. Um, sometimes dimensional analysis made it like problems that you could do on your own much harder, but it was all for the sake of when you do get to really hard examples, knowing how to handle it. So I'm multiplying by something over itself. Pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. It's right here on your unit circle, 180 degrees equivalent to pi radians. So you're not going to change the value, but you are going to change the periods. The degrees and the degrees cancels. The 90 over 180 reduces to 1 over 2, so it just becomes pi over 2 radians. For 210, if you multiply by pi over 180, degrees cancels. The 0 on your 210 and 180 can cancel. 21 over 18, both divisible by 3. So that would make it 7 pi over 6 in radians. And then negative 315. Did we talk about negative angles yet? If your angle measure is negative, you don't go counterclockwise, you go clockwise. So negative 0 to 90 is down here. And then negative 90 to negative 180 is that quadrant. Negative 180 to negative 270, you're just going the opposite way around. It's not really going to change anything about the translation. So I'm still going to multiply by pi over 180. The degrees will cancel. 
315 and 180 are both divisible by... Fifteen divided by forty-five. One eighty divided by forty-five. Oh yeah, they're both divisible by forty-five. So the negative three fifteen divided by forty-five gives you negative seven pi over one eighty divided by forty-five is four. Good. Did we talk in this class about when you're, probably not, because this is the first, oh no, maybe we did with, we did with um, polar graphs. So if I had like a pi over six, that's zero. How did I label that? No, six pi over six. So then this would be halfway, that would be three pi over six. Four pi over six and five pi over six would be in there. 7 and 8 pi over 6 would be there, 9 pi over 6. The full circle would therefore be 12 pi over 6, right? Does that make sense? So if I look at something like, well, pi over 2, we don't need to worry about because pi over 2 and 90 are ones we know anyway. But 7 pi over 6 radians. Oh, well, that's pi over 6, so I'll keep that. So if opening up this way is gets you to 6 pi over 6, then 7 pi over 6 is going to be right there in the third quadrant, yes? Which should make sense that if that's 180 degrees, it's a little bit past 180 degrees. It was equivalent to 210 degrees. Does that make sense? So 180 to 210 is a reference angle of 30 degrees. The reference angle from six pi over six to seven pi over six is pi over six, right? So you can think about that difference 180 to 210 in degrees being 30 degrees or 6 pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6 being 1 pi over 6 in radians. On your table right here above 30, I want you to write pi over 6. Anything that's a pi over 6 angle, 95 pi over 6. I don't know which quadrant that's in. I'd have to go round and round and round and round until I figured it out. But I know the reference angle is pi over 6. Does that make sense? If I gave you 47 pi over 6, I know the reference angle is pi over 6. Um, if I do the pi over 4 one, I'm counting and labeling these by 4 pi over 4. And this is negative, so I'm going to go the negative direction. So going backwards, this would be negative 4 pi over 4. Keep going, this would be negative 8 pi over 4. If I kept going, this would also be negative 12 pi over 4, and so on. So negative 7 pi over 4 is like me starting here, opening in the negative direction to negative 4 pi over 4, and negative 7 pi over 4 is going to be just shy of negative 8 pi over 4, so it's going to be a first quadrant angle. Does that make sense? With a reference of pi over 4, because that's the denominator 4. That should make sense with negative 315 degrees, because here is 0 degrees, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, but not quite negative 360. So that degree-wise also makes sense to end in the first quadrant. Good? Okay. So if we think about pi over 3, if I just draw a new one, here's 0, here's 3 pi over 3. 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3. So 1 pi over 3 would be a first quadrant angle. So we should expect something between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. If you multiply by 180 over pi, see it makes sense here for the pi radians to be the one in the denominator because your pi and your pi will cancel. 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. which is between 0 and 90. In E, it's 3 pi over 4. So when I label this, I'm going to label this 4 pi over 4. 
So if I'm opening up 0 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is going to land me right there. So the reference angle in radians is 1 pi over 4. If I'm thinking of translating this to degrees, I can see that it's between 90 and 180. I just need to find out exactly what. Yes? So multiply by your 180 over pi. Your pi's cancel again. 180 divided by 4 is 45. And 1. And then 45 times 3 is 135. Which is in between 90 and 180. Good? And then if we go back to the 11 pi over 6, being that it's over 6, I'm going to do 6 pi over 6. And then a full circle would be 12 pi over 6. So 11, there's 0, 3, 6, 9, 12 pi over 6 would be the full circle. So 11 pi over 6 is going to sh stop one shy. So the radian reference is pi over 6. Degree-wise, 0 degrees, a full circle is 360. 0, 90, 180, 270. It's going to be somewhere between 270 and 360. So if I do my multiplication by 180 over pi, your pi is cancel. 180 over 6 is 30. 30 times 11 is 330. which puts it in between 270 and 360. Good? So, if you can't remember 180 over pi or pi over 180, which is which, think about what you want to cancel. If it's in degrees, then you want degrees to cancel, so put the 180 degrees in the denominator. So it'll turn it into radians. If it's already in radians, put your pi in the denominator, so your pi's will cancel, and it will turn it into degrees. Okay. These tables, 0 through 90, give you the first quadrant ones. Those are the ones that you had a table that you memorized last year. These other three I'm going to talk about after the fact. So, really quickly for your, your degree measurements, you also need to know your radian equivalent. 45 degrees or your pi is over what? 4. So, anytime you see 11 pi over 4, 17 pi over 4, 21 pi over 4. Your reference angle is pi over 4, 45. You can jump right to that pi over 4 and then 40, make that your 45 degrees. And 60 is pi over 3. So 100 pi over 3, think about pi over 3 and 60 degrees. 90 is pi over 2. I could show you where all these values come from again. I don't know if you care. Probably not. At the end of the day, you don't really ever think about it again, so I'm just going to give them to you. Your sine of zero is zero. Does anybody get, well, don't write these down yet. But does, any, does anybody remember this trick? Root zero over two, root one over two, root two over two, root three over two, and root four over two? Do you remember that trick? That's how they actually progress. Now, we don't actually say that. This is why I told you not to write it down. But root 0 over 2, what's the square root of 0? Zero? 0 divided by 2 is 0. So we would never say root 0 over 2. We would just say 0. We also would never say root 1 over 2. What is the square root of 1? 1. So that would just be 1 half. Root 2 over 2 is the answer. Root 3 over 2 is the answer. But we would also never say root 4 over 2 because the square root of 4 is the whole number 2 and 2 over 2 is 1. The cosine column for those just goes backwards. Root 0 over 2, root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, root 4 over 2. So simplified down, that's just going to be the values from above backwards. 
And then, do you remember where, where, tang where tangent comes from? Tangent is sine over cosine. So if you were really ever at a loss or really didn't want to memorize the tangent values, as long as you had these memorized, you could just do this divided by this and get that answer. So what is zero divided by one? Zero. This is a little bit harder because if you do a fraction divided by a fraction, you're going to have to keep change flip. So you might want to memorize that one as root three over three. That's what it would simplify and rationalize to. 45 is okay. What's root 2 over 2 divided by itself? 1. Root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Again, you'd have to keep change flip. Things would cancel. That just ends up being root 3. And then for the 90, what's 1 divided by 0? Undefined. Okay, these last three in each column, I, I remember based on my quick little sketch. So for my sine one, I know that the sine of zero is zero. And I just, I know through my first column that the sine of 90 ends up being one. Does everybody see that? Sine starts at zero, it increases at one. Your, your axis, if it's zero on one end, it's going to be zero on the other. And if it's one on one end, then it's going to be negative one on the other. And I just use that little graph. So the sine of 180, here's my 180 degree angle. The sine of that is zero. 270 degrees has a sine of negative one. And 360 degrees has a sine of zero. Does that make sense? For cosine, my graph is slightly different, but exact same idea. It's just that the cosine of zero is a one at first, and the cosine of 90 has decreased down to zero. So rather than increasing from zero to one like sine does, it decreases from one to zero. And so at the opposite end of the zero pole, you have another zero. And at the opposite end of the one, you have a negative one. So the cosine of 180 is negative one. Of 270 is zero. And of 360 is one. And then tangent, similarly, the tangent of zero is zero. And the tangent of 90 is undefined. So the opposite side of the zero axis is also another zero. And the opposite side of the undefined is still an undefined. So the tangent of 180 degrees is zero. Tangent of 270 is undefined. Tangent of 360 is zero again. Good? Okay, so this is what you did a lot of last year. And before we, well, the first few are all first quadrant angles, and then we'll change things up. So you're just going to steal your values. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. The cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Multiply those. What's root 3 times root 3? 3. Right? Technically root 9 first, but root 9 is 3. And then 2 times 2 is 4. The tangent of 45 is 1, plus 2 times the cosine of 60, and the cosine of 60 is 1 half. That's going to give you 1 plus 1, which is 2. The sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, and this is telling us to square that. So what's root 2 squared for the numerator? 2. And for the denominator, 2 squared is 4, so that's just 1 half. And then lastly, the sine of 30 is 1 half. Tan of 60 is root 3. 
and I'm you could get a common denominator you don't have to I'm fine with that good okay here below is where we get into our quadrant stuff so really quickly just a, a reminder from last year all students takes calculus tells us what is positive in what quadrant. So on the first quadrant, everything's positive no matter what. Second quadrant, only sine is positive. Third quadrant, only tangent is positive. And in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. So by default, the other two are negative, right? So the first thing you have to do is evaluate your reference angle. So the sine of five pi over four is gonna be the same as whatever the sine of its reference angle is. Yes? So the reference angle is what? Don't think too hard. It's over 4, so the reference angle is just pi over 4. Yes? And so we can get our, our numerical answer right away. The sine of pi over 4, since pi over 4 is uh, 45, root 2 over 2. So that's the number part of it. The positive or negative depends on what quadrant this is in. So you want to evaluate the reference angle and the quadrant. So if it's 5 pi over 4, I would label this one 4 pi over 4. Brock, open up. If this is 4 pi over 4, which way is 5 pi over 4 going to go? Which quadrant? Backwards? No. Right, 0 pi over 4 increases to 4 pi over 4, and then 5 pi over 4 would be third quadrant. Right, so is sine positive or negative there? Negative. So your answer is negative root 2 over 2. Remember this? You don't? Okay. So if I'm looking at cosine of 11 pi over 3, the reference angle is just pi over 3. So I'm just going to do a reference angle equals pi over 3. And then I'm going to look at my chart. What is the cosine of pi over 3? 1 half. Okay, so that's my numerical portion. Now my quadrant consideration is going to decide if that's positive 1 half or negative 1 half. So we have to think about what quadrant this is. So being that it's over 3... If I'm going around the unit circle, this is 3 pi over 3, this is 6 pi over 3, this is 9 pi over 3, this is 12 pi over 3. Two full circles would be 12 pi over 3. So which quadrant is 11 pi over 3 going to be in? Fourth. One kind of tick prior to that. So that's in the C quadrant. So is cosine positive or negative there? Good. Your quadrant determines the sign. Your reference angle determines the value. Got it? Negative 3 pi over 4. So reference angle, what? Pi over 4. So look at your graph. Tan of pi over 4, 1. Negative 3 pi over 4 is our angle, so we're going backwards. So if I go backwards, this is negative 4 pi over 4. So where would negative 3 pi over 4 be? Which quadrant? The third, right? And so Q3 is tangent positive or negative there? Positive. Let's jump to some of the degree ones, like number 11. Cosine of 600. We need the reference angle first. Now, in order to get the reference angle for this, we're probably going to also be getting the quadrant at the same time because it's not as easy with degrees to take the reference angle. So if I'm thinking about 600, one full circle is 360, right? And then every time I add 90, that moves me to the next quadrant. So 360 plus 90 would mean that this is 450. Add 90 more, this is 540. Add 90 more, this is 630. So we're between 540 
and 630, correct? So which quadrant are we in? Third. So right away, is cosine positive or negative in the third quadrant? Negative. And our reference angle, so if this is 600 and that was 540, what's the difference between those? 60 degrees. What's your cosine of 60 degrees? Look at your chart. One half. So again, your reference angle gives you the value. Your quadrant tells you plus or minus. Does that make sense? Uh oh, that's that's not good. I definitely teach it the same always, so I don't. I I, I might have put a little bit more in one theory than I did last year because it truly was brand new, so I probably slowed it down a little bit. I feel like it got really hot here. I saw like three people with the clock and I was so angry. And I figured it out. Because dude, I was like, yeah, I'm going to 